have much more meaning to the attacker if, as he strikes you on the cheek, you're looking him in the eyes. In Nashville, we were asked by different folk to allow them to defend us. Even downtown, when we met taunting and so forth and so on. As a, as a group, we summarily rejected that. Now let's see what we've learned from this to us as to how uh, we might act nonviolently. Our defense had to be in a very similar fashion to the defense of a soldier in the battlefield. <laughs> to militantly take the hostile situation and live and work through it so that you could change the tenor of the situation. That was our defense. On Wednesday, when the executive committee of the Board of Trustees met, they voted to expel me. I think basically uh, I took it as being one of the prices I had to pay for the work I was doing and for the positions I took as a Christian. That uh, it was a form, of, uh, a form of persecution, form of crucifixion, and that I had started out recognizing that was quite possible. I love the passage that says that love vanquishes fear. More than four decades after being expelled, the civil rights leader is back at Vanderbilt, this time as a distinguished university professor. So the issue is not fear. The issue is if you let fear govern your values. <laughs> who better to teach this class on nonviolent struggles and social movements than the man who played a major role in those battles? It was Lawson's fight to end segregation in Nashville that led divinity graduate student James Moultrie to this class. It's been really fascinating being around um, essentially history and so basically here as a sponge trying to uh, observe all of the information that I possibly can so it's been really interesting. After years of unheeded complaints about On this night the history lesson is about the 1968 Memphis sanitation strike. Undergraduate and graduate students watch a documentary made about that historical struggle. One of the leaders fighting for the workers rights is Reverend Lawson. And no matter how you dress it up in terms of whether or not a union could organize, it's still racism. For at the heart of racism is the idea that a man is not a man, that a person is not a person. A preacher, a prophet, a religious teacher has to have pathos, has to have passion. Uh, um, there's a kind of agony to watching people get hurt and bruised and injured and killed that, that one cannot tolerate. Native Americans know this. The Reverend's message of nonviolence in the fight against injustice has been a powerful one for senior undergrad Gina DeVito. So far it's been really inspiring, um, just the power that nonviolence has um, had on the world and um, that's been the biggest thing, just learning more about that and um, a lot of things that you never learn in history classes. We saw a wrong and with our bodies we went into the situation to correct it. Could that have been done with guns or with billy sticks? No. And to hear a man speak as passionately about it as he does, and he has committed his life to it, I mean, that's something that you, know, you really can't put a price tag on that, or even a value for that matter. One painful lesson discussed on this night, the assassination of Martin Luther King. 
that took place while he was in Memphis to help with the sanitation strike. The politics of assassination in the United States that was encouraged by all kinds of people, sometimes some overt, some covert, changed this nation forever. The movement for social change in the United States has not yet recovered. It will recover, but it has not yet recovered. As this class ended, one wondered how a person stays optimistic in this painful battle for social change and a better community. You have to dream. You, know? you have to dream. When someone asked him earlier, they asked him if he had ever questioned uh, the nonviolent movement, especially after the fact that King had died. And I was sitting up there thinking, I was like, wow, like King was actually, in a sense, um, like he was killed by the very thing he fought his whole life against. Um, you know, slay the dream. Dreamers slay the dream, but there's something about a dream that just never dies. We shall Shall overcome.